BTEC Applied Human Biology Unit 1, Topic 1, Biological Molecules Revision. So carbohydrates, here is a diagram of alpha glucose. So on alpha glucose, the high, on carbon 1, the hydrogen faces upwards and the OH faces downwards. So that's the key thing. The rest of it, it's a hexo sugar. So you've got a carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons. Got a H on carbon 2 facing upwards, OH downwards. Carbon 3, you've got an OH upwards, H downwards. Carbon 4, an OH downwards, H upwards. Um, a carbon 5, you've got H facing downwards. And then you've got a CH2OH group. So the key thing about alpha glucose is that on carbon 1, the H faces upwards and the OH faces downwards. For beta glucose, it's the other way round on carbon 1. So for beta glucose, the OH faces upwards on carbon 1, whereas the H faces downwards on carbon 1. Some definitions now. So metabolism is all of the chemical reactions that occur within an organism's cells. A monomer is a small chemical unit that makes up a polymer. A polymer is a large molecule formed from combinations of many monomers bonded together. Examples of monomers in biology are monosaccharides, such as glucose, amino acids and nucleotides. Examples of polymers in biology are carbohydrates, proteins and nucleic acids, like DNA. Condensation reaction. This is a reaction in which two molecules become bonded together through the loss of water. So H2O is taken out and released and that's a condensation reaction and a bond is formed. A hydrolysis reaction is a chemical reaction that breaks apart a larger molecule by adding a molecule of water. So lysis means splitting, hydro means water. So it's using water to split a molecule apart. So you need to add the water to split the molecule. Some examples of monosaccharides are glucose, fructose and galactose. The properties of monosaccharides are they are soluble in water, they're sweet tasting and they form crystals. Some examples of disaccharides are maltose, sucrose and lactose. So maltose is made up of 2-alpha glucose, sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose and lactose is made up of glucose and galactose. So this shows the formation of maltose. So when two glucoses are added together, you take the H2O away because it's a condensation reaction and a bond forms between the two new the two glucoses which is called a glycosidic bond. So H2O is taken away by a condensation reaction and you get a glycosidic bond formed. And this here shows the disaccharide maltose. Polysaccharides, polysaccharide definition. Carbohydrates that are made up of more than two monosaccharides. Some examples of polysaccharides are starch, glycogen, cellulose, and the functions of starch are energy storage in plants. The structure of starch is made from amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is a long straight chain of alpha glucose which is coiled and amylopectin is a straight chain of alpha glucose with side branches of 1,6 glycosidic bonds. The functions of starch is that it's insoluble, it doesn't affect osmosis, it's good for energy storage in plants like seeds and storage organs such as potato cells, it is coiled so it's compact, there's lots of alpha glucoses stored in a small space it can be hydrolyzed to release alpha glucose for respiration. Functions of glycogen. Glycogen is good for energy storage in animals. For example, muscle and liver cells can be hydrolyzed to release alpha glucose for respiration. Structure of glycogen. 
straight chain of alpha glucose one four glycosidic bond with the side branches of one six glycosidic bonds it is shorter and more highly branched lipids triglycerides are an energy rich compound made up of a single molecule of glycerol and three molecules of fatty acid a phospholipid is a lipid that contains phosphorus two fatty acids and one glycerol and is a structural component in cell membranes so you've got the phosphate group which is hydrophilic it faces towards water you've got the fatty acid chains which are hydrophobic which face away from water elements in lipids are carbon hydrogen and oxygen the functions of lipids are for insulation energy storage structural for instance cholesterol and phospholipids in membranes protection and they are non-polar saturated triglycerides there are no carbon to carbon double bonds composed of saturated fatty acids typically have high melting points and tend to be hard at room temperature for example animal fats and topical oils unsaturated fatty acids are a fatty acid that has one or more double bonds between the carbons in the hydrocarbon tail. Such bonding reduces the number of hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon skeleton. Phospholipids. Hydrophobic means water hating, so the fatty acids face away from water. Hydrophilic means water loving, which is a phosphate head. And hydrophilic means they face towards water. The phosphate head faces towards water. Proteins. Functions of proteins are structural support as a catalyst, hormones, antibodies and enzymes. Amino acid structure. So you've got the amino group, which is NH2. I don't know why that's got a double bond, because it doesn't have a double bond. Uh, that should be a single bond between the N and the H. So NH2, you've got a central carbon and you've got the carboxyl group. Polar. A molecule with partial charges and it mixes with water. Nonpolar is the equal sharing of electrons and they have no charge. A dipeptide structure is when two amino acids join together via a condensation reaction. The H2O is taken away via condensation and you get a bond form between the C and the N. And this is known as a peptide bond between that carbon and that nitrogen. Levels of protein structure. Primary protein structure is a sequence of amino acids. Secondary protein structure is coiling or folding of a polypeptide due to hydrogen bonding between amino acids, alpha helices or beta pleated sheets. Tertiary structure, the third level of protein structure the overall three-dimensional shape of a polypeptide due to interactions of the R groups of the amino acids making up the chain. It's held together by hydrogen bonds, disulfide bridges and ionic bonds. Quaternary structure is the fourth level of protein structure, the shape resulting from the association of two or more polypeptide subunits. Hemoglobin structure is a large globular conjugated protein made of four polypeptide chains, each with an iron containing heme group. Collagen structure. There are three protein chains twisted into a triple helix. There is a high glycine and proline content, content and there are cross links which tie the fibres together. So there are hydrogen bonds between the fibres. Globular proteins. These are spherical, water-soluble proteins. Fibrous proteins. These are long, insoluble structural proteins. Glycoproteins is a protein with one or more covalently attached carbohydrates. Functions of glycoproteins. They act as recognition sites, help cells to attach to one another, and so form tissues. And it allows cells to recognise one another. Nucleic acids. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. The monomers of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. There are three components of a nucleotide. Sugar, five carbon sugar, phosphate, and a nitrogen containing base. Complementary base pair rule. 
Abnine and thymine form pairs across two strands and guanine and cytosine form pairs across two strands. So I remember it as apples on the tree, cars in the garage. So adenine pairs with thymine, cytosine pairs with guanine. The bond form between adjacent nucleotides is called a phosphodiester bond. DNA structure. DNA consists of two long chains of nucleotides twisted into a double helix and joined by hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases, adenine and thymine, cytosine and guanine. DNA function, it's a long molecule which stores a lot of genetic information in a small space. RNA structure, it's a short single-stranded ribose sugar. The bases are A, U, C and G. There are three types of RNA, mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. Messenger RNA or mRNA, every three bases is called a codon. It is an RNA molecule that carries copies of instructions for the assembly of amino acids into proteins from DNA to the rest of the cell. Transfer RNA is a type of RNA molecule that transfers amino acids to ribosomes during protein synthesis. It has an amino acid binding site and an anticodon. So looking at the difference between DNA, mRNA and tRNA, DNA is a double polynucleotide strand. It's coiled into a helix. Every three bases is called a triplet. It has thiamine base and deoxyribose sugar. Always the same ratio of A and T and C and G. So there's got to be, if there's 20% adenine, there's got to be 20% thiamine. Um, if there's 30% cytosine, there's got to be 30% guanine. There's many millions of base pairs long. mRNA is a single polynucleotide strand. It is linear. There's no base pairing. Every three bases is called a codon. It has uracil base and ribose sugar. There's no set ratios and it varies in length, but it's generally shorter than DNA. tRNA is a single polynucleotide strand. This is folded into a clover shape because there's some base pairing. It has three exposed bases called an anticodon. It has a uracil base and a ribose sugar. There's no set ratios and it is 75 nucleotides long. ATP structure. Adenine, ribose and three phosphate groups. So adenosine is made of an adenine um, base a ribose sugar and three phosphate groups. So adenosine is adenine and ribose. So adenosine triphosphates because there's three phosphates. Uses of ATP are phosphorylation, active transport, metabolic processes, exocytosis and movement.